You're on the air. I'm on the air? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you earlier, you said something about Obama being the uh, most dangerous candidate, and uh, I just wanted to see if you could elaborate on that, maybe. Yes. I mean, when I say that, what I'm talking about is is that Obama is the most sincere of the three candidates, but he still represents the establishment status quo. So the fact that he's the most sincere of the three candidates, he's the one that can get the people to go along with the agenda of the establishment. And recently, if you read, uh, if you go to Frequency Clear, and r which is the website, www.frequencyclear.tv, the most recent article I wrote was on neoliberalism whose founder, Dr. Nye, has just, for the last year, and he's, this guy is part of the, the think team that's associated directly with the people that are around Obama. And everything he writes about now is about how the establishment needs to recapture the imagination of the public. That they have to, they have to, have a, they have to bring the public in and make the public feel like they're part of constructing this new world order. So, as I see it, the whole shift in planning right now that the establishment is doing is to bring, try and convince the public to go along with what they're trying to do. And so I see Obama as being the one that is the most capable of doing that. And I mean, the whole theme of his message is change, but the changes that he's offering aren't really changes. So, I mean, that's why I see him as being the most threatening of all three candidates. As long as he's interconnected and still tied into that same matrix leadership they're all pushing for the same directives they're all moving in the same direction you know it's the policy designers and the policy setters that represent the truest power in government at this point the people that we vote for especially like the senators and the the um, especially the president they're front people it's the policy designers that are around them. It's the people that are in the think tanks and the roundtable groups that do all of the, the write-ups and all of the policy directives that actually get implemented. And when you go and research those people, they all have a very specific objective. All right? And that objective is to absorb the United States into larger and larger transnational entities. And those transnational entities are literally married and interconnected and when I say married, I mean most of the time your senators are literally, their wives and husbands are on the corporations and the roundtable groups, and they're on the roundtable groups too, that all form this kind of this hive. And this hive puts out papers, puts out directives, puts out research, and they all talk about the same objective. Okay? And that objective amounts to neo-feudalism, where the future is going to be this weird high corporate, you know, transnational corporations literally with the leadership marrying each other. I mean, neo-feudalism, a new kind of feudalism that has never been experienced before. That is what they are trying to accomplish. And until we can attack the heart of that system, until we can recognize that it is that system that represents the most dangerous fundamental threat to us and our liberty and our prosperity, no matter how good we feel about the candidate, we can never win. No, no matter even how well-intentioned the candidate is, we can never win. I mean, look at Ronald Reagan, look at Jimmy Carter. You know, they were actually sincere. I think if you really read about what they were talking about, they believed in what they were doing, but the problem is, is they bought into this system. And once you've bought into it, all bets are off. You can't, you can't fix it. The whole system is the problem. So you're saying we're just pretty much screwed regardless? Yes and no, okay? When you get sick, what happens? You get, you, you get a fever, you throw up, it's a very uncomfortable process. Okay, but part of that sickness running its course is the process of being sick, of feeling the physical manifestations of what is wrong. All right, so yes, we are screwed at this point in the sense that what is coming has to be dealt with. All right, we're playing out the exact same story that's been played out again and again and again. The only difference now is the stakes are a little bit higher because the technology that we're dealing with is like going into Star Wars, Star Trek level technology. The situation is catastrophic. We are sinking. 
The country is a plane on fire and a nosedive. But the problem is, is that Obama is offering the same type of solutions and the same policy directives that the power structure has been pushing for. Right? We can't have paid for health care in this country. There's no more money. Okay? The country is bankrupt. It's gone. The country is gone. Socialized health care isn't even an issue anymore. Fighting in Iraq shouldn't even be an issue anymore. We can't afford any of it. The disconnect between the population understanding this and understanding that it's your money, it's always your money, it's your effort that makes these things possible. Okay? And Obama, he is the worst because he's the most sincere. And he's the one that can make you feel like he's sincere. But the only solutions he has offered is the expansion of the socialist state. A socialist state that feeds off of you, that transfers your wealth and your energy into the same thieving corporatist system that Bush represents. There's no difference. Until we have a candidate that is willing to stand up and say, the country's broke, we need to bring the troops home, and we have to eliminate 90% of the social services. And you see, you can't accept that. And a majority of the public can't accept that. Because, oh my God, we need the... And they don't understand that it's already gone. It's already gone. They're just going to keep promising it to you until a collapse comes on a magnitude that just cannot be absorbed. A collapse that nearly happened a month ago. That the establishment themselves have admitted that. That you would have woken up the next morning and your credit card wouldn't have worked. The banks would have been closed. Within two or three days, every physical food item in the country would have been stripped from the shelves. And we would have entered into an economic depression far beyond what even was experienced in, in 1929. And they've literally, they are, their solution has been to give themselves more power and to consolidate the system further into their control. Because they know when the eventual collapse comes, the more consolidation and control they have, the easier it's going to be to implement the totalitarian socialist system. This is about power. This is about world domination. And these people are not playing around. And Obama is an actor, and I'm tired of hearing about how Obama is the great savior that's going to save us when he has surrounded himself with the same people. Has he told you the country's bankrupt? Has he told you that there's no socialized health care for anyone because the country is bankrupt? Has he said he's going to bring the troops home the day he's elected because we can't afford the wars? Half the budget of the country is spent on the military industrial complex? My God! It's theater. It's theater. It's mind control. And the problem is, is Obama is probably sincere. That's why he's the most dangerous, is because he believes. And if you don't believe that the establishment will find an actor, just like they did with Ronald Reagan, to hoodwink the people into believing that there is a social revolution underway in their political establishment, then you're naive. You're naive. I'm sorry. You're politically naive. You are looking at WWF wrestling and believing that it's real Olympic wrestling. All right? This is political theater. It is the Hegelian dialectic. It is a system of false choices. The establishment are the maze makers. 
you read about their intersection and their love of behavioral and operant conditioning for the last 150 years. They took the lessons of Caesar and Napoleon and Hitler and turned it into a science. And that science has been applied to your mind to create a maze of false choices that leads to one conclusion, one end. Your servitude, your slavery to this system. 